Hey, it's me, Laura, the creator of this podcast. Before the episode begins, I just wanted to thank our patrons. If you're interested in financially supporting us and getting a patron shout-out as well as bonus content, make sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash auroraeverlasting. Now, let's get to the episode. Aurora Everlasting June 29, 234, 11.02. Would you like another? No, go? I'm all right. Thank you, Flynn. Do you know how long it will be till the other shift arrives? They'll take a few hours at most. Eager to get back to base? Yes, sir. My son always gets antsy when I'm on overnight patrols. And frankly, I miss my family. Don't we all during these hard times? No worries. I'll make sure you will see him again as soon as possible. Did Anne... Anna. Anna. Did Anna ever mention why she thought this was Ender 7? Her crew's mission was to go there and apparently she and another member set out on a landing pod and then something happened. It must have been pretty traumatic though. If she's missing all her memories of it. Do you think she could be lying about the amnesia? I'm, I'm a soldier, sir. I don't think I'm qualified to give a professional assessment. No need for professionalism. Do you think she's lying? No, she seems sincere. That's all I needed to know. Is that them? Yes, should I... Sit down. They still have some ways to go. Who was with her on the landing pod? Some crew member. I don't think she told me their name. All right. Hello, hello. You must be the lovely Anna. Yes, I prefer Dr. Kastner, actually. Oh, of course, of course, Dr. Kastner. I hope you're well after spending the night out in the desert. Do you want some water? We also have bread, right, Flynn? Yes, sir. I I'm all right. Who exactly are you? I'm the supervisor. That's your name? Yes. Let's get to the reason I'm here then, shall we? Base was notified of a new locator being used, and the user was identified as Dr. Anna Kestner, a Porus employee. What? You didn't tell us you work for Porus too? You didn't ask. I take it we were correct? You were Dr. Kestner? Yes. Good, good. I already talked a bit with Flynn about your arrival and such, but I still wanted to ask you myself. How did you get here? I woke up in the desert. I walked for a bit. I ended up here. And before that? I don't remember. Not anything? I was in a landing pod descending to Ender 7. That's the last thing I remember. And now I'm where? Ender 18? He did just rename the whole planet, in a very uninspired way, if I may add. Ha. Huh. No, no. I haven't heard of a planet called Ender 7 either. There must have been some misinformation from the side of corporate. But I'm sure we can solve this little problem back at base. Do you need another minute, Dr. Kestner, or are you ready to go? I... you want me to come with you to your... base? Yes. We have the doctors and research to help with your condition. We'll be going back there too, as soon as our shift is over. Uh, all right. There's nowhere else to go anyway, I suppose. Wonderful. Then let's get going. She's been asleep for almost... Well, yeah, it's been 24 hours at this point, and well, I'm assuming she's either dead or waking up soon. Actually, I might just wake her when I'm done with this. So let's lay down the info, shall we? Margaret Nielsen, former 
our current no former Polaris astronaut teleported onto my roof yesterday around 6 a.m. She believes it's the year 2552, which it is not, by the way. And she can't really tell me what happened to everyone else who was part of her crew. Not that she talked about them a lot anyways. Polaris officially claimed she's been dead for about 200 years, so I'm guessing they're hiding something, as always. But now I've got my in. With Dr. Nielsen's teleporting and my expertise, we've got this in the back. I just need to figure out which... One sec. Hello? Ow! <clears throat> Hi, you're up. Yeah. D do you have food? You're hungry? Of course. You slept like a whole day. I have... I have some apples. And bread? Yes, bread. Follow me. I... What would you like to eat? Uh, apples sound good. I don't really care. Here you go. You okay there? Yes, just... Isn't it kind of purple? No. I mean, not as much as this one. Why are your apples purple? Because that's the color they are? I don't know what to tell you. Whatever. At least it tastes kind of like an apple. Because it's an apple. So, how did you sleep? Good, I guess. As comfortable as it gets. Good, good. So, what's your plan? I don't have a plan. Tell me, I can help you. I know this area inside and out. You want to go somewhere, I can take you. You need something, I can get it for you. I have stockpiled as much info about Porus as possible. If you let me help... No. This is not a little group project. This is serious. Let the grown-ups deal with it. You're what, 17? I'm 19. Christ. Thank you for letting me stay with you, but... No, you don't get to boss me around. You look like you're barely 25. Who are you to give me any orders? I'm 226 years old. I, I don't care. Well, it was nice spending time with you, kid. You're going to the Paris facility then? Maybe. You're gonna need a car. And I just happen to have the only one in working conditions for miles. Keep talking. June 29, 234, 1114. When were the colonies here established? We're on year 234 now. The ship was sent from Earth in 2354. Uh, how many people were on the ship? 400. And how many are you now? Roughly thousands spread over all colonies. Listen, Dr. Kestner, we can talk about all this at base. There we'll have some food, some more comfortable clothes, and most importantly, not this much sand. I'm sure you can understand my curiosity, Supervisor. It's not like this is a usual occurrence for you, right? More unusual things have happened in the colonies. Like what? Disappearances. Care to elaborate? Most people who go too far from the base don't return. Like to the middle of the desert? Yes. Like exactly where we are now? Yes. So why isn't your border patrol here? Someone needs to keep track of unusual happenings, such as your arrival. So what's the chance they won't make it back? Hi. Are they aware of that? <laughs> no. Okay. That's it. I'm not going with you. Why not? What's with the theatrics now? You're leaving your people to die over there. They're not my people. They're just some clones we sent to test the waters. Are you insane? That still means they're people. Barely. I'm leaving. We could have done this the easy way. But if you choose to turn yourself into an inconvenience, I'll need to approach this differently. You think I'm intimidated by this thing? Yes, I think so. It's a gun. Now get up. We still have a ways to go. No! I'm going back! They're dead already. There's no point. Don't be pathetic and kill yourself in an attempt to save some worthless... Oh. I don't care! Stop! No! Oh, damn it.
Do you even know how to? Where did they give you a license? I don't have one. What? There's not exactly a place where I can go get one. There's not. I I told you all infrastructure belongs to Paris. They live in their gated communities with their nice little picket fence homes and their license obtaining places. It was just a question. You don't know how bad they've made everything. You keep saying that. Because it's true. My dad used to work for them. I don't know what it was exactly that he did, but it was something inside the labs. Nothing too high ranking, but yes. A lot of information I have is the stuff he brought with him when he left. See, I told you it'd get less bumpy on the main road. Yeah. So why not just ask your dad about- He killed himself. Oh. Yeah, I don't think we need to talk about this much. And your mom? Turns out it is very hard to get insulin outside of facility grounds and yeah, that's that. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry about your family too. You could talk about them, you know? We've got a bit of time. This is just you trying to get some information from me. Could be. Oh, no, absolutely not. The crew consist consisted of Leo, Anna, Evelyn and myself. We, of course, we got along in the beginning. None of us would have signed up if we didn't, but we were colleagues, work friends, I guess. That changed so fast. I don't think a day went by without someone threatening to murder the other, but it was all in good fun, most of the time. And to be honest, Anna is just so easy to piss off. She can argue about anything for days, and Leo, well, they were always up for a fight. So the two of them together, fireworks. Poor Evelyn was always trying to mediate, at least in the beginning, because she obviously had a thing for Anna and didn't want to see her upset, even if it wasn't good fun. Later on, she just joined me and joined the chaos. It was wonderful. I spent every day of the past hundred years with these people. Not just because I had to, but because I wanted to. And now, we'll see whether I ever get to see any of them again. When I went to sleep yesterday, I was hoping this was all some kind of horrible nightmare, but no. I woke up today and was still here. I'm sorry. No need. I'm gonna find out what went wrong on our ship and then I'm gonna fix this whole situation. And I'll help you. Alright. Yes. I'm gonna need some of your secret insider info though. Have you... Are you okay? Yes, I... Margaret? June 29, 234, 1119. Flynn! Aiden! <coughs> Anna! Flynn, where are you? Help! I'm coming! Please just tell me where you are! Help! Follow my voice! Aiden! Aiden! Flynn! Aiden! I didn't hurt him. E Evelyn? Evelyn! Can you hear me? This is all your fault. No. Evelyn! Please answer me! Hello? Oh no. What the? You're back! Back? Yes, you could have at least told me you were leaving. It's pretty rude to just, you know, leave. How did I get here? What? You did your thing again. Teleported, that's the word. I did? Are you alright? I don't know. Any pain or do you... Stop. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. How... How long have I been gone? About two days. I drove back home after you went away. And well, I didn't actually think you'd ever be back if I'm totally honest. I was already planning on... Give me a second, okay? I need to get my thoughts in order. Can you get me some tea? I... Yes. Yes, of course. I'll be back in a sec.
So I didn't know which one you'd want, so I just got you chamomile. Chamomile. I hope you like it. I personally prefer some good old black tea, but there's not a lot left and I'm saving it for hard times, which I guess this counts as a hard time. So I could make you a cup of that too if you... No, it's fine. So where did you go? Did you just teleport here? That'd be kind of lame. I mean, not to offend you, but I'm sure there's better places to go. I was in a forest. I saw something, someone from afar. I, I drew it. I'm not an artist. <laughs> I can see. Oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that out loud. <laughs> no worries. I'm, I'm really sorry, but I have no idea what this is supposed to be. I can't. Is this an arm? And this is the head. But no, it's... I don't know why I even drew it. I know I can describe it properly, but, but it looks the same way it feels when every vein in your body freezes up. It looks the same way ice makes your skin burn. It looked like death, like murder, like being ripped apart and feeling every second of pain in the deepest corners of your being. I keep saying I saw something, but that's not the right word. I felt it, I knew it. I could have closed my eyes and nothing would have changed. I, I, that sounds horrifying. How does that even happen? Wait, 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 wait. This could be helpful though. What, the eldritch horror I encountered? I don't know what that word means. Also, no. If you could do this on command, the teleporting and time traveling and whatnot, we could have an upper hand over Porus. How? How? You can go in there easily, with my help, of course. If anything goes wrong, you can just get back out like that. We got a chance. Heck yes, we do. <laughs> what? Heck. Let's just get to work. Aurora Everlasting returns with its next episode on April 4, 4 p.m. Central European time. It was created by Laura Reicher and protected under Creative Commons 4.0 International License. This episode was produced by Laura Reicher and Elena Hirzebacher. It was written, directed and edited by Laura Reicher. The script was edited by Sophie Erhardt. This episode featured Marie-Christine Heiling as Anna Kestner, Sophie Erhardt as Margaret Nielsen and as the disembodied voice, Elena Hitzebacher as Orson, Amando Palombo as Supervisor, Max Schachner as Flynn and Leonie Ebenberger as Aiden. If you want to help us out or show your support, tell a friend about this podcast. Or, if you're feeling really crazy today, you can even tell two friends. You could also review a podcast wherever you like. The best way for us to gain new listeners is with your help, because, let's be honest, our marketing budget is non-existent. If you're interested in bloopers, extra content, or you just want to financially support the podcast, make sure to subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash auroraeverlasting. And for some background infos, feel free to check out our social media. We're at aurora underscore everlast on Twitter and at aurora underscore everlasting underscore podcast on Instagram. Thank you for listening and find us on the podcasting app of your choice for the next episode.